The optic nerve can be affected by various mechanisms during non-ocular surgery, and many of them have a vascular basis. The ophthalmic artery branches off the internal carotid artery and pierces the nerve to form the central retinal artery, which runs through the nerve and feeds the inner layers of the eye. The optic nerve itself is fed by the posterior ciliary arteries. Small peel arteries branch from them into the posterior region of the optic nerve. An anastomosis of small vessels feeds the front of the optic nerve. Anterior ischemic optic neuropathy involves the front of the optic nerve and swelling can be seen through the pupil. Posterior ischemic optic neuropathy involves the posterior portion of the nerve as it runs through the orbit back toward the brain. During surgery, the optic nerve can be affected by several mechanisms. Decreased perfusion pressure in large or small vessels, decreased oxygen in the blood, decreased venous outflow, direct axonal injury to the optic nerve. A drop in overall perfusion pressure in the large vessels that feed the ophthalmic artery can cause injury to the optic nerve. A decrease in perfusion pressure at the level of the small penetrating arteries can also damage the nerve. Lower oxygen content in the blood can harm the optic nerve, no matter how good the perfusion pressure. Blocked venous outflow from the nerve will also cause injury, partly because of resistance to the forward flow. Also, the blocking of venous outflow causes the veins to leak fluid and other substances that are toxic to the optic nerve. This is called venous infarction or venous stasis damage. Finally, direct axonal injury to the optic nerve can occur without a vascular basis, for example, when the tissue itself is bruised, cut, or compressed. Some people have anatomical or physiological factors that increase susceptibility to optic nerve injury. One such factor is a small cup-to-disc ratio which increases the risk of anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. Other pathophysiological mechanisms feed into the common pathways for injury to the optic nerve in the perioperative setting. A drop in blood pressure could decrease the perfusion pressure to the optic nerve. A drop in hemoglobin content or oxygen levels would decrease the oxygen content delivered to the optic nerve. Elevated intraocular pressure might increase the risk of anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. A decrease in venous outflow will decrease perfusion pressure and also increase venous pressure, which in turn will increase interstitial fluid in the orbit and the optic nerve. Increased interstitial fluid in the orbit and optic nerve can compress the small arteries that feed the optic nerve, decreasing the perfusion pressure at a local level. It may also cause direct axonal injury to the nerve itself. A vicious cycle can begin in which increased interstitial fluid in the orbit and optic nerve may block venous outflow which again will increase venous pressure, which will increase interstitial fluid in the orbit and optic nerve. Vasoconstrictive agents are often used to increase perfusion pressure to large organs such as the brain. They constrict small vessels in order to shunt the blood to the large vessels. Because the optic nerve is fed by very small vessels, vasoconstrictors may actually reduce local optic nerve perfusion. In one study, six independent risk factors were associated with optic nerve injury in the setting of spinal fusion surgery with the patient in the prone position. Blood loss may injure the optic nerve through several different mechanisms. Blood loss can cause anemia, which will reduce oxygen delivery to the optic nerve. Blood loss can also lower perfusion pressure through a drop in blood pressure. During surgery, blood loss is replaced by fluids. If those fluids are primarily crystalloids rather than colloids, interstitial fluid may accumulate in the orbit and in the optic nerve. Another risk factor is the prolonged duration of the prone position in spinal surgery, which can increase blood loss and increase venous pressure. This causes increased interstitial fluid in the orbit and the optic nerve, with potentially decreased venous outflow that further decreases perfusion pressure. Use of the Wilson surgical frame, which puts the head lower than the heart, and obesity are two risk factors likely to increase venous pressure, raising the risk of optic nerve injury. Vascular and hypercoagulative risk factors and vasoconstrictor use were not independent risk factors for vision loss in the study, although they might increase a patient's individual susceptibility. However, male sex was an independent risk factor, which raises the question, does the anatomy, physiology, or vasculature of the optic nerve in men make it especially vulnerable to this kind of injury? As we can see, the pathogenesis of perioperative ischemic optic neuropathy is probably multifactorial, may vary in different surgical settings, and can be case-dependent. Awareness of these potential mechanisms and risk factors in the perioperative setting is important for patient risk assessment and management.